Isa, thank you for taking some time to speak with us. Now, you are Japanese from Kyoto. Yes. And you have a lot of interest in wine. Yes. And you have a TV show? Yes, in or, Japan, yes. And you no, talk, no, not a TV program. A TV Japan, program? Yes. Where you talk about uh, uh, Italian wines. Yes, yeah, exactly. So how are Japanese people interested in Italian wines? Because I lived from 1983 to 89 in Roma. At that time, I worked for a newspaper. Mm -hmm. and so I lived for six years in Rome. So in, during this time, uh, I began to taste the wine, taste the food, so love the food and love the wine. So I was totally, uh, totally in, impressed by the Italian food and wine. So, so I began my career. Your, your whole face lights up when you talk about Italian food and Italian wine. And I'm, I'm Italian in my heritage, so I, I get that. So, uh, so the Japanese people, they, they uh, are now opening up themselves to this type of a culture, a wine culture, a food culture like this, that's, not, that's very different from the traditional Japanese culture. Yes, we don't have the tradition of making and drinking wine, but, but it's already 30 or 40 years that we began to taste the wine. Mm -hmm. The interest is increasing and increasing. The consumption is very low because it's a three liters and a half mm -hmm. pro capita. Uh, but uh, people want to know about uh, wine a lot. Yes. So it's a, there's a curiosity. Uh, maybe uh, as a joke, we can say they read and listen and look at the program more than drink. <laughs> yeah. Now, you said that um, about one fourth of the Japanese population, mm. uh, they have a gene where they can't really process wine well. Exactly. They are incapable to digest the alcohol. Yes, yes. Yeah, so it's a problem if they try to drink it. So yes, it's, it's uh, very dangerous for the people who, who have really no, no mechanism to digest alcohol, also to eat the, some sweet. Uh, Italian sweet or French sweet, which contains a brand, etc., is also can be dangerous. Yeah, and um, so what? Uh, now we're here in Slovenia, mm -hmm. and uh, you were in uh, the area called Berda, a wine uh, making region. Why did you come here? Uh, because I love this kind of wine. I, uh, this region is an uh, excellent, miraculous terroir because they have a magical combination of the warmness of Mediterranean Sea and the freshness of the Alps Sea mm. and that kind of typical soil called Ponca mm. here, which gives a minerality to the wine. So uh, here, we, uh, the unique wine can, can burn. Yes, and so you like those those particular qualities, and you're right. I guess because you have the mountains, like you said, that are near here, the sea is below, and this is kind of in between the two. So that makes an ideal winemaking region. Yes, yes, because wine needs the warmness and the sun, sunshine, and also the freshness during the night. In these days, at night, the temperature is go down to 15 degree, and the wind is very strong. Yeah. The wind which came from Alps very cold, so it keeps the freshness and the acidity of wine. Yeah, interesting. So how has wine changed your life? Uh, no, it uh, doesn't change my life, but maybe my life is richer. Yeah, <laughs> maybe. yeah. so did you drink wine before you moved to Italy? No, uh, at that time, the. Uh, tax was so high in Japan for the wine. So uh, for, as a student, uh, I didn't afford to drink wine. Yeah, but uh, then you discovered now, you obviously love the Italian wines. Are there other types of wines that you enjoy? No, no, I love also the very much French wines and yeah. American wines so all over the world. And my specialty is Italian wines because I know very well. I, it's uh, 30 years that I work in the Italian wine world. So uh, maybe the people ask to me to write on my Italian wines, but I love mm -hmm. the wine of all over, over the world. Yeah, and, and you, uh, through your TV show, what are you trying to get people to learn from the TV show? That so uh, this is a program, TV program of two hours. Mm -hmm. uh, I travel in the wine region, so I visit the wine, and I visit the restaurant, Trattoria, uh, and uh, I want to communicate the wine, not only wine in the glass, uh, well, that taste of raspberry or taste of no uh, alcohol. Uh, I want to uh, communicate wine as a uh, story and the culture, because wine is inserted uh, in the context, the cultural context, the historical context. So okay. uh, the uh, purpose uh, is to communicate wine with uh, all around.
And that's important when you're experiencing the wine that you know the, the story, the background, the mm -hmm. history, as you said. Yeah, exactly. It's, and if you meet the people who produce the wine. Yes, uh, yeah, exactly. All these things have an impact on your experience when you drink the wine. Exactly. All the aspect which is behind the glass, it's a characteristic of wine. The wine is one of the few beverage, beverage. Uh, which can communicate which is behind the glass. Uh, some beers are very good, no? uh, hot day like today, to drink a beer is very good, but beer communicate rarely something which is behind the glass. Right. Why always communicate? So it's the fa uh, fascination of the wine, I think. Yeah, so uh, how have you enjoyed your time here in, uh, in Slovenia? Yeah, Slovenia, uh, mainly drinking wine and visiting the winery, so it's a, a very monotonous life. My life is very monotonous. I came to the region, I go to visit the winery, I visit the vineyard, I drink, taste the wine, and I eat the local food. <laughs> <laughs> the repetition of that kind of life. Well, terrific. Well, I hope you enjoy the rest of your time here. And, thank you very and, much. And thank you for sharing thank your experience. You. Thank you very much was happy to share the joy of the interview with Isao with you. Hope you enjoyed it.